Sangha Wijaya led from start to finish in the 200 meters backstroke to win the gold medal. He's in one, Reyna's in two, Jianhan of Malaysia in three, Chokratin of Thailand in four. So no one stopping E Gade Sudatawa at the moment, is there? No, there's Kwatan Wen. Look at him catching up on this. He's had a day's rest yesterday after competing and winning two gold medals in the first day of competition. Kwatan Wen is coming on strong. This is a magnificent swim from Kwatan Wen to keep up with Sudatawa, but he's left himself a little too late now because Sudatawa is going to touch first and retain his gold medal title for Indonesia. Kwatan Wen just 0.31 seconds behind, 55.80 seconds. It's not a new SEA Games record, but the Indonesian was way too strong. 56-11, that's a new national record by Kwatan Wen. She's had no equal in Southeast Asia already for the last three editions. A win to match Juni Sim and Jocelyn Yeo. This time the other way in from Vietnam is nowhere close to the two Singaporeans who are in first and second at the moment. 58-84 is the SEA Games record. 57-54 is the Singapore national record. Tauli slightly ahead. She's not going to break the national record. She just dips below the minute mark. So there we go. She is hammered out now already. She's tired out. But still the gold medal is kept. I've not been doing fly for a long time. Um, just started swimming at foot school last year, so it's a fun event for me. Um, less pressure, I feel like, and it's a it's nice change from the freestyle, so I have fun. He is in lane number four, the fastest qualifier from the heat, and he's gotten off to a very, very good start once again, making sure that he gets the propulsions from his dolphin kicks and making sure that he gets maximum efficiency from underwater. And he is already half a body length ahead of his nearest rival, which is Suparit of Thailand. Joseph Schooling has already made sure that he makes certain of his endurance in those events and he's trained up on making his leads count. Spousy Triadi of Indonesia returns just 0.18 of a second ahead of Joseph Schooling who needs to turn up the gears right now. Joseph Schooling head in perfect position. Here he comes now. Joseph Schooling over Fauzi Triadi is trying to give him a race in this event. We didn't see that coming from lane number eight. Joseph Schooling if he looks to his right will see that he's not that far away from him but he is slightly ahead of Fauzi Triadi. He is gunning for that SEA Games record. Joseph Schooling just slightly ahead of Fauzi Triadi, Joseph Schooling will touch home first for Singapore, 52.67 seconds, that is a new SEA Games record, it doesn't lower his national record, but he was head, shoulders, knees and toes ahead of Fauzi Triadi who finished in second spot, brilliant swim by the Indonesian, but no one's come close yet to Joseph Schooling, a new SEA Games record, three gold medals, three SEA Games records. I don't have the full lineup of the swimmers yet and full confirmation yet. Clement Lim with his first event of these games, making sure that well, he's not tired, he's got all the strength inside of him, making sure he keeps pace with Fauzi Triadi at least and has a good enough lead against Lim Ching Huang of Malaysia. Clement Lim will touch home in first place against the SEA Games champion, mind you, and this is a very quick time as well, 50.68 seconds just outside of the national record. Vernon Lee goes next for the Malaysians and we've got Darren Lim who was 7th in the 4x100 in the 100 meters freestyle last night going as the 3rd leg swimmer for Singapore. This is a very good league that they've taken against the Indonesians as Darren Lim goes into the pool. And that might be the main difference here as Joe Schooling goes into the final leg with a 3 body length lead now to take with him. 2.46 seconds ahead of the Indonesians and the Malaysians have even lost third place at the moment no one's going to stop Singapore though it's Joe versus the clock 321 that's another SEA Games record for Joseph Schooling another SEA Games record four gold medals four SEA Games record this is unforgettable for Joe Schooling and Team Singapore but uh, a lot of credit here has got to go to their first leg swimmer so it's on me it's all about all these guys you know I was going last I was just trying to keep the lead and these guys did all the work and I just tried to bring it home. I was just going to give it my 110% for the team. No, it's a great honor being on this team. These three guys are amazing. They decided to just had a best showing. No, not so good, but I brought it home for these guys. I know these guys are supporting me all the way. So I had to swim as fast as I can for them. So our team, we did all this together. You know, I'm very proud of my three teammates. to give me such a good lead so I could just extend a little bit. Yeah.
So tomorrow it's a chance for Kwa Ting Wen to take revenge on Nathanan Jungkrajang in the 200 meters freestyle. This was an event that she won in 2009 and she missed out on the last SEA Games because of studies and injuries. Nathanan took the 100 and 200 meters freestyle crowns. Exactly. Uh, by the way, Mark's an excellent commentator. He's very dedicated. In fact, he's so dedicated he gets engrossed in it to the point he does the respective stroke. Joseph Schooling takes it in for the butterfly. <laughs> Sorry, I, yeah, I know you didn't want anybody to know that. It but is past your bedtime. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yes it is. Now the Nan didn't give up on the 100 meter title last night as well. And Ting Wen will have to go all out tomorrow if she wants that 200 meter goal. So all the best to her and the swim team. Right, it's time for a break, but still to come, we've got basketball, archery, equestrian, all that. Team Singapore on your screens when we return. Welcome back. It's today at the Games with action from the day three of competition of the 27th Sea Games. There's still hockey, shooting, equestrian, archery to come. But first up, basketball. Now, Singapore hasn't won a basketball medal since 1979 at the Manila Games. And the team came into these games looking to rectify that situation. Right, the players are younger but bigger. And going into today's match, they had already picked up three wins. So a final match against Myanmar today and hopefully a chance to break this 34-year drought. Zaya Tilly Indoor Stadium is the setting. Singapore and Beng Siangno opting not to make any changes at all to the starting lineup, which was a one sided game. Singapore all the way here. Lovely little pass from Wang Wei Long. Delvin Go taking it to the hoop, giving Singapore a considerable lead in that first quarter. Then a missed three pointer, but Delvin Go again showing his worth. Good footwork, taking it to the hole. Making absolutely no mistake. That first quarter was to finish 34 10. Singapore totally dominant and totally in control. That was the most important thing to get off to a flying start. Let's not forget it has been history making for Singapore in these games, beating Malaysia for the first time in 34 years since 1979. And they put themselves in a golden opportunity to win a medal here at the 27th Sea Games because they currently sit second in the pool group as it were only defeats to the Philippines and Thailand blotting the card 
plenty of good work yet again and taking it straight to the hole for the easy layup was Ng Han Bin making absolutely no mistake then into the third Singapore turning the screw adding points to the board all the way good footwork again from Delvin Go and a nice loop in two pointer off the backboard meant that Scott Duke all he could do was look on so with Malaysia to play the Philippines in their final group game and Thailand to play Myanmar you would fancy Thailand to beat Myanmar which would put them in the silver medal position but it would relegate Singapore to the bronze medal because you can't see Malaysia finding any way past the Philippines the dominance that they have shown in this competition so far Yong Wu Kwa with the defense Tan Chin Hong on offense taking it to the hole taking and making sure that Singapore have a chance of winning a medal here at the SEA Games. We had like two months, three months of preparation. I think all worth it. And everybody gave, gave their best. Those who are in uni, they gave their best. Uh, juggling between studies and basketball is tough. But we still managed to survive. And for those full-timers, I think they did really, really well. Eighty-nine fifty-two. well done to the team. So Singapore is looking at a bronze medal with two more matches to be played. And that's between Philippines and Malaysia and Thailand and Myanmar. Now, if you take into account the fact that the Philippines have won 15 of the 16 gold medals in basketball, the only time that they didn't win is because they didn't yeah. take part. They were banned <laughs> from it. So Malaysia, well, I think I'll have to go with Paul Maysfield in this. It's going to be very, very difficult for them. Exactly. It certainly will be. Now, Thailand should beat Myanmar, which means that the Thais will take silver, leaving Singapore with the bronze. Everything, although, will be confirmed in I think a couple of days. We'll yeah, know. that's right. Okay, on to shooting now and this morning in Yangon, the shooters were aiming to be bang on target for gold. Sisters Tae Su Hong and Tae Su Yi were hoping to strike gold in the women's 10 meter air pistol team event together with Tio Sun Sier. In last month's Southeast Asian Championships for shooting, the girls had taken silver behind Taiwan. But up against strong opponents from Malaysia and Vietnam, the girls' nerves would be tested. In the end, the girls scored 1,109 over four series. Vietnam, who had finished behind them in the Southeast Asian Shooting Championships, took revenge by winning the gold with a score of 1118. Malaysia 1111. That gave them the silver, while Singapore had to settle for the bronze. Tio Sun Sier and Tae Su Hong had another chance for a medal. Their individual scores in the team event qualifying them to go into the individual event. Unfortunately, Su Hong was eliminated in round one and finished eighth. But Sun Sier, who finished fifth in the event two years ago, steadily made her way to the shoot off with Vietnam's Gwen Min Chao. A final shot. Oh. And Sun Sier had frustratingly and narrowly missed out on a gold medal. Her score of 194.6, just one point less than her Vietnamese competitor. So gold to Gwen, silver to Sun Sier, and bronze to the Vietnamese Li Tai Hong Nok. Oh, sadly, that's the way it goes. It's cruel, cruel sports yeah. sometimes. <clears throat> you know, just at one point, you've missed out on standing on top of the podium. But that's not to take away any of their achievements. The girls did a great job with that silver and bronze in the bag. I certainly think so as well. Now, tomorrow, Guy Bin, Paul Lip Meng, and Lim Sui Hon in the 10 meter air pistol. They already have a silver from the 50 meter pistol. And of course, they'll be going for gold at the North Dagon shooting range in Yangon. Well, we'll be talking horses next right now. The equestrian team, why are you laughing? I don't know, because you look like a horse, so it's just funny for you to say that. Let's go to the equestrian team. They won a bronze yesterday in the team dressage event, and today they were riding on me to go for individual <laughs> honours in dressage. I look like a horse, right? <laughs> yeah, you do. Well, at the equestrian field in the Wana Tedadiki, it is the dressage event, the individual event now for Singapore. After coming up with bronze yesterday, expectations are very, very high. Caroline Chu riding It's Mine, a horse that was drawn out. Of course, this is a borrowed horse event. And of course, dressage is very much the control of the horse, the movements of the horse, the steps, and how you go in time with the music. So the rider of the year, 2009 represented Singapore at the Youth Olympic Games did Caroline the 21 year old law student who is studying in Bristol in the UK 
have a look at the way that its mind's head is dropping a little bit these horses will be used for the show jumping as well but the horse and the rider in perfect sync and harmony you can see the steps there the judges five judges there are at different positions in and around the square to give their marks that's a good ride from Caroline Chu considering a lot of it is all depending on the look of the draw and Predrag Marjanovic has drawn the horse Rolex each team had three Australian horses and one local horse to pull out of the hat they'll all be redrawn for the show jumping that will take place early next week as well Predrag has represented Singapore in Malaysia, Korea, very much a show jumper more than dressage, but you can see there the steps very much in time, and it is a very, very fine discipline and art, and Predrag doing his best to try and keep the horse in sync, you can see the head a little bit higher, riding well. Well, that's going to be a score of 60.810 for Predrag. As it was, the medals went silver and bronze to Indonesia. It was Malaysia that won gold. The equestrian team will be in the show jumping event next. Good luck, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and that's on the 17th of December on Tuesday. Let's go for a break right now. We'll be back with reports on the Singapore Archers and the Singapore women's hockey team. Keep it right here. It's Today at the Games. Welcome back to the third edition of Today at the Games at the 2013 SEA Games in Myanmar. Hockey coming up in a while, but first over to the archery field here in Naypyidaw. Modern William Tells in the compound and recurve competitions today. 
10. And the archers were lucky enough actually to meet Aung San Suu Kyi yesterday. She wished the competitors all the very best. Well, you know what? Maybe that will spur our archers on. So let's take a look at the qualification rounds. The Wunan Tech the Archery Field was the venue for the men's and women's individual recurve qualification round this morning. Singapore has never won gold in archery since the event was first included into the SEA Games two decades ago. And with erratic wind conditions during the practice days, it looked like the wait might go on a little longer. But the conditions this morning were perfect as Singapore's five representatives in the recurve competition took their positions for the first of two rounds of 36 shots from a 70 metre distance. The top 16 from both men and women's would elimination round tomorrow. On hand to lend his support to the archers was Acting Minister for Culture, Community and Youth and Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Communications and Information, Lawrence Wong. In the men's event, Singapore was represented by 24-year-old Tan Si Lia. After the first 36 shots, Tan was placed fifth in a field of 21 archers. By the end of the second round of shots, he dropped to eighth position with a total score of 645. I think I did well for my first round, but second round, my score dropped a little. Second round, the wind started to pick up a little, and at a certain point, I was a little bit uh, uh, not confident with my release, so which caused a uh, deep in score. In the women's individual event, Singapore was represented by the quartet of Chan Jing Ru, Vanessa Lo, Clarice Ong and Lu Su Lin. Chan qualified for the elimination round with an overall score of 625, which puts her in sixth position at the moment. Also making it to the top 16 was 20-year-old Lo, who finished in 10th with a score of 605. Liu Anong finished outside the top 16 with scores of 591 and 549 respectively. Um, I'm very happy with my performance because I scored my personal best so far um, in this uh, SEA Games qualification round. So I think this field is wonderful. Uh, past few days has been a bit more windy, so today slightly less wind, strong sun, quite similar to Singapore's conditions, so it's good. The individual recurve elimination round and quarterfinals will take place tomorrow. The archers will be in the elimination rounds tomorrow. We want to wish them all the very best. We certainly do. I'm terrible at aiming. I can't even aim it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> on to hockey next, and the women's team took on host nation Myanmar in Yangon. Singapore did a brilliant job against Indonesia, winning it 2-1. They've got now Myanmar, the host country, as the opposition. Here's a first corner and a chance here, and there's a really, really good shot, and Chua puts Singapore in the lead. That's one goal to nil, and a very, very impressive opening then for Singapore. Myanmar are really proven to be uh, no mugs at all. Let's have a look at the good stop. Excellent stop there by Chen and then fired in to the corner by Chua. Excellent work. This is the second goal coming up. Another Oh, and that looks like it's tipped in over the top of the goalkeeper and it looks like Teng. Eunice Teng has come up and claimed the goal. Chua actually fired it in. It was a good stop again. Put into the D. Let's have a look at it. Put into the D and Chua fires one in but look at Eunice Tang, she tips it over the top and claims the goal. It's 2-0 now to Singapore, and that is a really, really good start. Myanmar, with just 13 minutes left in the match, come up with their own attempt here, and still in with a chance, and then a big fire. Ooh, and that is Justin who puts it in brilliantly. Number four celebrates, and there's still time for Myanmar to come back into this. It's 1-2, and Singapore have got to be careful here. Let's have a look at it once again. First one is blocked, then the second attempt goes in. There's the block. It's a great rush by the Singapore defence, but then it's really hammered in great height over the goalkeeper and into the corner. A very, very good goal by Justin. But this is the end of the match, the last chance saloon for Myanmar. Can they get this one in to level things up? It's a tension here, real nervous moments for Singapore. But can they weather the storm? They have. That is a really, really good defence. It's in the goal, but the, the referee has given no side. And that is a win for Singapore by two goals to one.
Let's have a look at it once again then. But wow, big relief for Singapore. They hold that up. And then there is an infringement on the play by the Myanmar attack. But that is two goals to one. Singapore unbeaten after two matches. Great work by Singapore team. Unlucky for Myanmar. But two out of two for Singapore hockey. A good start by the women's hockey team. And uh, it's been a long time since we had a very good women's hockey team. I remember the 90s, uh, the 80s, 90s, Melanie Martins and gang, 60s, you know. the, the 40s. <laughs> the <thing>. <laughs> well, anyway, the men got off to a good start yesterday. And it's the turn of uh, the men's to face Myanmar. And that'll be happening tomorrow. They'll want their second victory on the trot. Now, let's see who's ahead in the medals race. You good with your Max? Yeah, Go let's on. do it. Right. And a change in the leaderboard. Thailand has overtaken Myanmar today to top the medal count with 33 goals. The host nation two goals behind and Indonesia just one goal short of drawing level with Myanmar. Singapore with 12 goals. The swimmers providing all the four goals today. Very good stuff. Right, so that's all we could squeeze into the time we have. Sit tight for tomorrow's action. There's going to be swimming, shooting, and athletics. Athletics starts its first day of competition tomorrow. James Wong going for a record 10th discus gold medal. I cannot wait for that. And of course, there's the football match if you want something even more exciting. Singapore versus Malaysia. Enough said, don't oh, you think? Yeah, that's right. Uh, that match will be carried live on Channel 5 at 5.30 p.m. Remember, 5.30 p.m. You make sure you're right in front of your TV then cheering the young lions on. Haris Harun and gang, all the very best. I believe that there's a draw. It's good enough to see them through to the semi-finals. Well, let's hope for that we'll see you tomorrow at 11 as well updates on how team singapore is done of course on day four of competition my name is divya Nair, and i'm horseface <laughs> thanks for watching goodbye <laughs>